What's up guys, today we're gonna to talk about selecting a kayak paddle for fishing. All right, so we're gonna talk about the basic overview of selecting a paddle for kayak fishing. There's three real big factors that I think you should consider. The number one factor is length, because if it doesn't fit your body type and the whole size, the seat height and th that you're using, then it doesn't matter how good of a paddle it is. So that's the number one factor. Uh, the second factor is weight, because you're going to be holding this thing out in front of you um, most of the day. Uh, you're going to be rotating it, so there's the, the static weight and then there's the swing weight of the blade. Uh, and then performance. How big of a paddle blade do you need? What type of materials do you need? And how much are you going to actually paddle? So those are the big factors. So first and foremost, length, in my opinion, is a factor of two things. Your height, your wingspan. Uh, as one and then the height from you to the water. Okay, so if you're sitting in a sit inside kayak, you're gonna use a much shorter paddle, you're gonna have a more vertical stroke. If you're sitting on a sit on top kayak, but it's in a low seat position, again, you're gonna have a uh, somewhat vertical paddle stroke, but it's still gonna be a little bit more uh, angled. It's still gonna be a little bit more off to the side of the boat, uh, but you're closer to the water, so you're gonna use a much shorter paddle. And then you've got the modern high seats, uh, of fishing kayaks, which are gonna uh, call for a much longer paddle. Uh, a general rule of thumb for me is that you stand your paddle up, you take your hand, and with that little V on the end, that last little knuckle, put it on top, and when you can grab your paddle and put your fingers over the top of it, that is by and large gonna satisfy your needs. Now, what I would also recommend is that you sit in your fishing kayak in the seating position that you're in. This is really the easiest way to do this properly. And I want you to reach out with your paddle to the front of your kayak around where your toe hits the water and put your paddle blade in the water. If you can get a third of the paddle blade into the water, you have, you have an adequate paddle. If you take and get in the high position and you reach the paddle out in front of you and you can't put the blade of the boat or the paddle in the water next to your toe or just around your ankle, you're not gonna have a long enough paddle. Then what you do is you bring the paddle down the side of the boat, you pull with the bottom hand, push with the top hand, and we'll talk about paddling technique in another video. But what I recommend is that you get a paddle that's adjustable if you can afford one. Bend and Branches makes an awesome series of plus paddles that come in most of their popular angler series. If you can't, you're definitely gonna wanna opt for a paddle that's long enough, but still short enough to satisfy um, all of your needs. So again, the easiest way to do this is what I call the sit and reach. Sit down in the boat, take your paddle, reach out around between your toe and your ankle. If you can't get a third of the paddle blade in the water, then you're gonna be short paddling. You're gonna be paddling really close to you and you're gonna not have an effective paddle stroke, an efficient paddle stroke. Uh, and that's a real easy test. Again, by and large, most people's height to wingspan ratio is get that paddle up, get your fingers just over the tip of it and you should be fine. Again, an adjustable paddle is gonna accommodate changing from kayak to kayak style, changing from conditions. Um, and then, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is weight, okay? Weight is a factor of materials, and really it's a factor of price. The lighter you go, the more expensive the, um, the paddle tends to get. Uh, by and large, hitting that sweet spot in the middle is ideal. But one thing you wanna avoid is buying the cheapest paddle that you can get out of the gate. And you also wanna avoid the property ladder of paddle purchases. And what I mean by that is I see people buy a $50 paddle and then an $80 paddle and then a $100 paddle and then a $150 paddle and then a $199 paddle and then a $250 paddle and then a $400 paddle. So by the time it's all said and done, they spent $950 on a $400 paddle. Y'all can check my math and put that in the comment section if you don't mind. But again, you've spent way more money on that paddle than you should have, so buy the best paddle that you can first. This is the one instance out of the paddle, PFD, and kayak where I tell you spend the most first because this paddle is gonna last you a long time. Weight is a factor of materials. It just simply is the way it is. The cheaper paddles have an aluminum shaft with uh, some type of poly nylon plastic blade, uh, which is gonna have a lot of flex in it. It's gonna be super heavy. Uh, from there, you move up into uh, a carbon fiber or fiberglass. Fiberglass is a little bit uh, heavier, uh, really stiff, uh, but not as heavy or as stiff as carbon fiber. 
um, but it's a little bit heavier. From fiberglass, you move up to carbon, and at the carbon level, you're gonna have one of the most expensive uh, paddles on the market. But what I love about the fact that leading manufacturers like Ben and Branches have done is they've started to hybridize their paddles. For example, you can get a carbon fiber shaft with a poly nylon, uh, which is a fancy word for plastic, that stiffened blade uh, at that angler ace level. That angler ace, in my opinion, uh, is the best sweet spot for the most paddle for the right amount of money. And from there you go up into the Pro Series, you spend a little more and then to the Pro Carbon. And with each of them, you can add the plus into it. Now, that paddle, in my opinion, is the most bang for the buck. The Angler uh, Plus Series is probably the best one out there. Uh, if you wanna jump up into the Pros, I would still stick with the Plus. And then obviously, if you're going up into the Carbon Arena, I would definitely go with the Plus to give you that adjustability. So you're probably gonna say to yourself, why are you talking about carbon fiber and fiberglass and you're holding a wood paddle. Well, the main reason that I'm holding a wood paddle is because it's pretty, so it looks good on the video. That's not the main reason. The main reason is you have to consider the conditions that you're paddling in. Now, if you're blessed and fortunate like me to have all the right tools for all the right conditions, then a wood paddle can be part of your arsenal, but it probably shouldn't be the only paddle that you own. Let me explain that. I really love river fishing. And what I love about river fishing is the seclusion. I love the ability to get away from everything. Uh, but rivers are really hard on paddles. And so these, these uh, Navigator wooden paddles have a dynel edge on them that really resists wear and tear. But that's still not the number one reason that wood paddles are uh, one of the best paddles out there, both for the river and a lot of times paddling flat water. And that's because wood is buoyant, okay? So what buoyancy does is it helps out with the swing weight in that when you put that paddle into the water and you paddle it down, on the backstroke, that wood kind of pops a little bit. So it makes it easier for you to paddle. So even though it's a little bit heavier than carbon or fiberglass, that buoyancy and that pop on the back end of the stroke kind of helps offset that a little bit and lowers the overall feel of the swing weight. Um, and then also, if you happen to get detached from your paddle, uh, for the most part, if a foam core fiberglass or foam core uh, carbon fiber paddle uh, gets away from you, it's gonna float because there's foam inside and there's also trapped air. But I have seen those paddles get swept under and I've seen those paddles not come back up. Not the case with a wooden paddle. So on the river, you guys have all heard, up the creek without a paddle. You don't wanna be up the creek without a paddle. So the one advantage of wood is that no matter what, unless it gets pinned under a strainer or an obstruction, that wood's coming back to the top because wood floats. So when it comes to river fishing, if you see me river fishing without a wooden paddle, then you just don't see that wooden paddle. It's inside my kayak. So if I'm on the river, I'm always gonna have wood. It's just a rule of thumb for me. And if you're looking for a, a gorgeous paddle that performs beyond its expectations for materials, it's not as heavy as you might think it is. And when it comes to the pop of that buoyancy of that paddle blade really offsets the swing weight, uh, then I would, I would heavily consider the, the Bending Branches Navigator paddle. And this thing right here is phenomenal. But guys, listen, consider the weight, consider the price, consider the performance, and then also consider how much are you gonna paddle? Because I'm gonna be honest with you, if you're in a pedal drive boat and you may pedal 100 yards a day, then go with an Angler Scout or Classic or lower end paddle because you're gonna be spending a lot of money on something you're not gonna use as much as you think you would and you could put that money towards other accessories, uh, lures, fishing line, you know, whatever. So again, hope you guys like this video on selecting a kayak fishing paddle and uh, do me a favor and watch another video.